Hello and good evening. Welcome to another edition of Project Healing Waters. Stay home edition. Here we are once again. Thank you for joining me. We do this each and I want to move my camera because I seem to look at that monitor a little bit. That way I can read the chat and I can look at you read the chat look at you because in front of me I've got one two of me um, that's how I've got my OBS uh, set up so I can see a preview of what's gonna come up next which is what's what behind me so how's it going everybody happy April 21st we do this each and every week in support of the St. Cloud Project Healing Waters. Um, waiting for that magic number of uh, 5% and below um, for us to uh, start meeting together soon. Uh, right now, I just checked before I jumped on here, and our uh, seven-day average is at 6.7%. Boo, boo. So, uh, you know, the only way through this is through this. Um, but until we get there, um, we'll be uh, right here. Because we're all here because we're not all there. That's what I say. I don't know. Good evening, Smart Mouth. How are you doing? So, tonight we're going to be tying the girdle, the girdle bug. Um, and. I will let somebody, if somebody could let me know in the comments or in the chat at some point, what is the difference between the girdle bug and Pat's rubber legs? I don't know. I couldn't, I, I, I can't tell the difference from uh, my limited amount of looking around. Um, and the girdle bug originates um, from the girdle and the elastic uh, that was incorporated in the material and at some point somebody uh, I don't know could have been Pat I don't know uh, took some chenille and those rubber legs or we call them rubber legs now uh, probably at some point somebody refers to them maybe as rubber hackle I'm not 100% certain. Uh, something to look into. Uh, it's always good to go down these uh, uh, little rabbit holes of, of information. I should start digging into some of these books here. But then again, it's starting to get a little bit warm. Not. We had snow flurries today. Oh my goodness. I just, uh, I don't know, bundled up, took care of my yard work. Um, it wasn't enough to slow me down. Um, I am very well, thank you, thank you. So, I don't know, we could jump right in on it. Um, this is not an overcomplicated pattern. Um, it's rubber leg chenille weight optional. Um, and I'm going to be adding weight to these. Uh, primarily because... I don't know. I've never really fished these without weight. Maybe I should tie some without weight. I don't know. I've always tied them with the with a little lead belly in them. Uh, get them down into the uh, water a little bit faster, and that's typically where you're gonna uh, you know, find uh, find these flies. Um, it's a stone fly. The rubber leg is a it's a rubber leg stone fly imitation. That's what we are uh, looking for. If you are one to match the hatch instead of just grab whatever and throw it on the end of your line and chuck it out there, um, you'll be looking for that stone fly hatch. And uh, yeah, um, I'm tying these up tonight in a size 10, I believe. I'll spin around and confirm that. Yes, size 10. Um, let's see what else about them. Yeah, they're rubber legs, they're chenille, they're what? I mean, 
They're pretty simple. And what I'm tying tonight is not um, by any definition uh, the be-all, end-all of anything rubber legs uh, or anything like that. Um, that's what we're coming up with tonight. And um, yeah, feel free to ask questions as we go. This is how I'm going to be tying them. So buckle up. Here we go. Let's switch the camera over and spin myself around. And we'll give our light a little bump on pink. So I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going to probably tie, I don't know, I'll probably tie them all on these, on these little streamer hooks. These are a size 10 streamer hook. It's a 1x strong, 4x long. So um, it's definitely taller Longer than it is shorter, I guess. I don't know. Dairikis. These are some good hooks. I haven't tied with uh, Dairikis in a while. But here we are. Go ahead and get that in the vise. There we go. Bing, bing, bing. You know you're good when you got got your vice singing too. Can you guys hear that the the singing of the of the hook? All right. Like I said, I wanted to add a little weight. I'm gonna be using some lead-free round wire, and I like going backwards. One, two, three, four. Once you get a few turns, just take a pause. And see how that little tag ends can spin around freely? Well, we'll use this to kind of ratchet that down. And that way you don't have to trim off, aka um, waste, any of this. All right, that looks good to me. Nice soft wire. This you could helicopter off if you don't have a cutter. Um, but if you have a cutter, you might as well use it, right? All right. And part of the reason why I did that as a reverse wrap is you'll see how it kind of bites in with our thread. And make sure that's, uh, I don't know, midway halfway up and down. I'm going to start my thread up front. I'm leaving a, a fairly, not a fairly long tag, but just enough to go all the way back. I'll leave a little bit of a tag in there. Get our thread started, and then that's going to work its way. The thread off the bobbin is going in between the individual wraps of wire while pulling down with the uh, tag end of thread all the way to the end. Then we can just go ahead and trim off our tag end on our thread. And now we can go over this once or twice. Kind of help lash that in place. But the business end on these are the, the front and the back. That's what's keeping it from sliding for the most part. Hey Josh, thanks for tuning in. Glad you made it. We'll work our thread all the way back to the rear. All right, I'm going to start off this first one. We're going to do this variegated olive chenille, this dark olive. Um, like I said, it's supposed to be a stone fly. So ideally, I guess you would want a, a, like a variegated brown, uh, but my brown is not variegated. But we're going to give this a try. Strip off a little bit of the fuzz. We're going to tie this in on the back end here, right to the bend. You can set that off to the side. And same with chenille. I mean, you know, if you were to start off by trimming yourself a, you know, six, 
six six eight inch piece or you know four whatever whatever length and then you end up with a, a one inch piece at the end well you just wasted an inch for nothing and I like to keep it my chenille on these little cards these are like a dime a, a dime a dozen little thread cards embroidery a lot of, I think they're embroidery you can find them to hold embroidery thread so um, I've got these bright white these are fly tire dungeon uh, bug legs um, any kind of round rubber leg will work um, but I'm going to use these bug legs and I think with the white is where you're going to get that kind of girdle bug feel so I try to even these tips up a little bit All right, so let's. I got four pieces, and these are about two inch. I got about four two inch pieces. We're going to use all four of these little guys. What do you think? All right, so with this product, it just happens to have this kind of a a natural natural curl to the bug leg, to the rubber leg. And let's kind of lift and lower that. And we're going to flip that so the back end kind of folds out, opposed to turning in. I'm going to take a couple of wraps. We're going to roll that over. Make sure we got. Got the same thing going on over here. There we go. All right, so our back legs are on. We're going to even those up here in a bit. I'm going to go about midway. And I'm going to take not one, but two. Two sets of legs now. Uh, uh, uh. Alright, here we go. We're going to do our little lift and lower. Take both of these. I'm going to lift my thread up. And I can actually pull both of those all the way to the near side of the hook. I'm going to take one more wrap of thread. And then I can take the far one and slide that over to the far side. And we don't have to go two bananas is a super simple pattern. So those are tied in. We got our legs looking leggy. We'll advance our thread forward a little bit. Actually, I'm going to back that up. I'm going to take these legs forward just a little bit. So we're going to undo, we're going to untie. As crazy as that sounds. I'm just going to move my thread forward a few wraps. All right, we're going to wash, rinse, and repeat. We'll try that again. So though, in case you missed it, I'm going to lift and pull it all the way to the near side. One more wrap. Then we can take this over there. There we go. Fold those back out of the way. And then we're going to come right up to the head where we got our last, last bit of rubber leg. Let's go ahead and let's lift and lower. All right, I'm going to wrap forward just a little bit. I'm going to pull these both, both these front ones forward.
what I need is where's my little where's my little grabber? It'll work even so as you can take your hackle pliers and look at that, look at that. My eyes are failing to find my uh, little hair hair piece. There we go. Release the hounds. There it is. I knew I had one. Would that have helped? A little hair piece. Yeah, that would have worked out just fine. Ooh la la. Ever try to hurl two or more colors of chenille together? Be acting like a cactus chenille or ice chenilles to the black ones? Yeah, absolutely. You could definitely do that. Have I have I tried that personally? No. Uh, but would I encourage that? Absolutely. That sounds like a brilliant idea. All right. So we're gonna do the dance. Of the rubber legs as we wrap our chenille and where and how we wrap our chenille is up to us but we're going to do this as a nice tight palmer going for a not a super thick body I guess if you had a uh, A thicker chenille, a medium. I don't know if this is a medium or, or what, but here I'm just going to take two wraps between those legs. I'm going to take a couple more kind of thicker wraps. you can actually give yourself a little bit of a taper of the body and I found that if your legs are long enough at least at the you know early stages of this fly um, the rubber legs just kind of bounce and kick around your thread for the most part all right careful not to trim off one of these fancy legs we got tied in there we'll separate that out Week. All right, let's do a whip finish. Hold that all back. Now that takes practice. Being able to hold material and junk. Once you get that whip finish started, once your triangle makes contact, you know you could almost just hang your bottom off the back if you had to, which I do from time to time. But. All right, we got some rubber legs kind of going all over the place here. So let's uh, even these out. I'm going to gather these all together. You can do them all individually or all at one time. Kind of pull them together. I, I just give them a little bit of a stretch and then I kind of let them relax. This is just what they do at the barber shop, right? Don't go too short on them. Just enough to even it all out. Because the fish are going to nip. Nip that. Here we go. So that is a girdle bug, aka uh, Pat's rubber legs, aka a stonefly imitation of sorts. 
I've had some pretty good success with this pattern. Um, let me know in the chat or in the comments if you've ever fished a girdle bug. I can hear one of our participants, I can hear him in my mind's eye just screaming and swearing right now because uh, not, not a big fan of the rubber legs. Some people uh, some people get a little choked up on the rubber legs, but I don't know. I think it's uh, if you're the one in charge, the rubber legs will listen. All right. Go ahead and check the chat. Throwing some ice dubbing in the mix works too. Makes really buggy, shrimpy looking bodies. Yeah, for sure. So there it is with the uh, green kind of variegated body. We'll come in here for a come in here for a close up. That's it on a on a on a four X shanked long hook, and I. From the from the middle legs forward, I went just a little bit kind of tighter on the body and did an extra wrap in between those legs. So you know, it, this is one of those patterns that you know it's not going to take you it's not going to take you too long to just crank out a bunch of these. The legs came out pretty good. Every now and then this autofocus pops in and I get a really, really crisp image. There you go. There you go. So that is the old girdle bug originating with some uh, girdle material but um, I can't say for sure if we even have a girdle in the house um, we're not that antique yet so we buy our, our girdle rubber elastic I suppose you might even be able, I mean, wherever you could harvest, you know, this kind of elastic material, I don't know, check your BVDs, I don't, <laughs> you tell me, but we'll go ahead and measure out there, and if you're getting them just as a, you know, whatever packaging, you know, just be frugal with your material and Usually you get quite a bit out of it, and these are, I got these cut out to about two inches. So once you fold it in half, each leg is roughly about an inch. And a hook is just a tick shorter than that. So yeah, that way you end up with a rubber leg that's about a hook shank, hook shank in length. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. You know what, I'm going to zoom in a lot a bit. That way, that way you guys can really get a good visual on this kind of lift and, lift and lower method. And we can really see exactly. I'm going to go in really tight. There we go. Let me know if that's in focus. I think it's, I think it does a pretty good job. So these hooks, oh, I forgot we're zoomed in all the way. These hooks are Daireki, made in Korea. 
High carbon steel, number 700, size 10, quantity 50. Streamer hook, 1x long, or 1x strong, 4x long. Dan Bailey, Livingston, Montana. Don't even want to see what that price tag is on the back. Oh, $7.95. That's a pretty good deal. $7.95 for 50 hooks. Back here so I can see the chat. All right. Wire. Let's find our weighted wire. And I'm using for a weighted wire. Lead. Lead free. 25, that'd be tenths, hundreds, thousands. So 25 hundreds. If I say that correct, 25 hundreds. I always got to look at, I always got to, my dyslexia, when I read things this way, it's different. So I got to think of my, in my brain, tenths, hundreds, thousands. So 25, let me know in the chat, is this 25 hundreds or 25 thousandths? Let me know in the chat. Wise, wise friends of mine, friends and followers and viewers alike. All right. We'll just take a few turns, wrapping backwards. And then we can smooth, we can use this as a ratchet to really get a hold of that and bunch that down. All right, we'll continue our wraps forward. Because I tell you what, I look at this and I, it's not 025. There's no O, 0 0.025. Zero over. It's like if you were ever in the military, what happened when you said O? Oh. Unless it was O nine hundred. Hey, smart mouth, have a wonderful evening. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Be sure to catch this uh, as a video later. Hit that thumbs button on your way out. Thanks. All right, we got our weighted wire on the shank. And like I said, the, the wires are optional. And what the wire does is it gives you some weight, helps get this bad boy down down to where the fish are. Uh oh. Did we lose my feed? No. I just said no internet connection. I'm nervous. Alright. Okay, we see my bobbin. I didn't mention my thread. I'm just using a 10 knot Vivas. All right, we're going to start off with a slightly longer, longer than shorter tag end. Once we get to here, it'll bump on. And then the thread coming off the bottom, bobbin, goes in between the wraps of thread. And I'm pulling it tight so it's hitting the shank of the hook. And each time it's grabbing this thread and is pulling that in. I'm going to lock this off on the back. I guess if we're really gung ho about it, we could pull it all the way forward. But can we see what happened there with that, that tag end of the thread? Kind of like a sewing machine. Our Right off our bobbin is tight against the shank of the hook, and that tag end was laid off across the top. And then we'll do our once over. You can even space that out. This is just everything's getting wrapped up with the uh, chenille and everything else. So, I don't know. Small crowd tonight. That's all right. Rain or shine, we do this every time. 
or even in the snow. All right, so the first one we did our um, olive variegated. I'm going to do one with this brown that I have. All right, so we're going to strip off a little bit of the fuzz. I always like to look for a birthday candle wick's worth, if need be. Tie that in on the back end. All right. We'll go ahead and get rid of that just to keep it clean, if you know what I mean. All right, our first leg. This is going to go off our back end. Here we go, we can lift, lower, and just set it down. I'll pull that to this side. Flip that over, and we'll have one on that aside. It works! We'll run our thread forward. And here's our halfway point. I'm going to go maybe about of a third. You know, the thing about fly tying and the worlds of insects and all that other jazz, things like, you know, things are really broken down into thirds if you think about it. If you look at a lot of the flies that we tie proportionately, et cetera, et cetera, you definitely find a lot of things in one-thirds, two-thirds, thereabouts-ish. So that's where we're going to put in these next two legs. Right about that two, one-third, two-third point right up front. All right, I like that there. Here we go, lift and lower. Go around, we'll lift, lower, we'll take one more easy wrap because that second wrap is what allows us to take this all the way over. So the near side has two wraps and the far side has one wrap essentially. Take a couple more. And I'm not reefing down on it to break it, enough to break it, but Nice and tight. We'll bump our thread forward again. I'll use my little helper there because we have one. So Josh says his aunt internet is a little wonky. Hmm. It's that time of year, man. We get all sorts of weird things going on. Pull this one forward. All right, so my thread is behind those legs. Let's be free, my legs. Be free. All right, let's go ahead and start palmering our chenille forward. And as we wrap, this is our opportunity for our kind of quality control check on our, our rubber legs. We'll just take nice, tight, touching wraps. All right, we're right behind these legs. Maybe one more. Nope, we're going to go right in between the legs now. Here, I'm going to take one, two. That's just going to give us a little bit of extra bulk at that point. 
I'm going to think of the... Alright, so at this point I kind of got these this French chenille was jammed back just a little bit too tight and it was preventing those legs from springing forward. Kind of want them to point forward or off to the side just a little bit. Secure this off. Careful not to cut off a leg. Have you guys heard about the stonefly named Trey? A three-legged stonefly? No, it was a hopper named Trey. Foam hopper. All right, fold all those legs back. Small little head. And then we'll whip finish. Uh-oh, I'm not confident with that one, so we'll do that again. Here we go. You know, a nice quality whip finish with proper tension. Head cement is not necessarily required. All right, let's go ahead and trim our legs and make everything nice and even. for is kind of the shortest ones in the batch and that's what I'm going to trim the rest to just on the initial maybe a little bit shorter up front maybe just a little bit shorter in back now caution 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 um, when you start trimming on these these legs don't grow back so if you cut things too short, then it all goes to schmutz. So there it is with a white legs brown body. Questions, comments, what do we think? Like it or love it? I think it'll fish. Tell you that for free. Guaranteed to catch a fish. Guaranteed. That's about as one of the most basic ties you can come up with, too. I don't know. Let me know. All right, we're right about the halfway point. We'll turn around and check in, say hi, hello, how are you? Good evening, Steve. How are you doing tonight? I didn't see you jumping in there until just now. Ah, that's some good coffee. I'm one of those people, man. I... I don't know if I could tie a fly with uh, without a cup of coffee. It would be awfully hard. I'm always drinking coffee while I'm tying flies. Keeps me awake. So, what do you guys think? Oh yeah. Just catching up on the chats. All right, well, I don't know. I've had a couple sips of coffee. We'll go ahead and uh, continue to tie on. Uh, 
who's excited for a uh, bass opener fishing opener here in Minnesota do you guys all right so I don't think it was a thing in Michigan growing up um, a fishing opener you know here in Minnesota we make a big deal about it um, in fact I have a uh, I have two of the banners that the state gave our VFW to put up, you know, Fisherman Welcome, St. Cloud Fishing Opener 2000, whatever it is, hanging in my garage. Everybody comes out, Governor, Governor comes out and uh, goes fishing, catches a fish and then walks away. All right, I like those. I like these little rubber leg stone flies. All right, let's do another one. So yeah, th that's kind of the traditional, typical colors I think you would find for, you know, these rubber legs. Um, with you know kind of a darker colored body with a uh, with the white with the white legs all right um, for those who are just joining these are Dairiki number 700s size 10 this is what we're looking at though this is the technical information 4x long 4x long actually it will show you So we're tying on a size 10. That's the difference between a 2x long and a 4x long shank hook um, based off of center. All right, I'll take that to right about there. So there we can see the eye of the hook takes us right to a 4x long for the size 10. Um, I tied one earlier and I would you know I normally you guys know me I like these barbless hooks um, but throwing this up on the same same hook chart this is just a uh, 2x 2x long shank and the difference between, well, what's the difference? Well, about that much. And I don't know, I kind of like these girdle bugs with a little bit more length than shortness to them. You know, how much is that? That's, let's see, half, quarter, eighth inch. That's the difference on a size 10. We're looking at an eighth inch. So take that and uh, educate someone with it. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see here. Steve says the big deal in Michigan is trout opener. I see. Now, what's what's crazy is I've I've been, you know, you, you got all sorts of people fishing for for trout here in Minnesota. Go down to the down to the driftless. Well, maybe they're not in Minnesota. I don't know, but they're always posting on the Minnesota fly fishing Facebook group. Um. Anyways, we'll take our point zero two five. All right, I never got an answer in the chat. Is that 25 hundredths or 25 thousandths? Hundredths or thousandths? I want to say thousandths, but I want to say hundredths. It's one of those things that my brain just can't lock in right now. We'll have to see what happens. But we'll start with some reverse wraps. That gives us our little kind of 
lever system. We can get to the back end here. Flatten that all out. Another thing the weight does is this really gives the fly, I mean literally, I mean, it's inside, you know, mass, but um, when you go to, if you were just to wrap chenille around just a bare shank, 25 thousandths, okay. Yeah, okay, because there's three digits. Yeah, because you can just replace the be 25 and then add the, replace the decimal with the 1. And there it is. Ba -doot -doot. I don't know. Oh, I wanted to switch threads. Switching colors. That is all. We're going from black to white. This is a 10 knot. I know what 10 knot means. That's 10 zeros. Psi 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way to 10. And that's, and that's our thread gauge system for this batch of thread. Work our way all the way through to the end. Build a little break, a little bump in the back. We'll advance our thread forward. Oh, boy. That's the first time that's happened to me today. That's a bummer. I'll see if we can't remedy that real quick. So this is as easy as just drop your thread into your little blue loop. Pretty easy. And then you take your pointy end, put it in there. Ta-da! Now somebody will say that you're supposed to just inhale it. Well, I don't know. I don't care for the taste and flavor of the end of my bodkin or bobbin. I can do without all that. Thank you very much. All right, we're gonna try a. a we're gonna go for an albino stonefly, albino path rubber legs. What do I mean by that? We're going to tie in some white chenille. Alright, just expose a little bit of that inner core, strip off the fluff. All the way to the back end. Oh, we got to get our rubber legs ready. So again, I'm using these white, bright white, I just call them bug legs. But we're tying a girdle bug, so we'll pretend this came from a girdle. Suck it in. Can you imagine? The first guy calling out to his old lady. Can you bring your girdle? I got some flies I gotta tie. It's quite the pattern. We'll fold that over once. Because I need four. Four legs, four sets, four pairs, four units for each. One, two, three, four. Uh, 
All right. Let's go ahead and tie this in on the back end. One on this side. And then we'll fold that one that's forward. Fold that back. Legs are looking good. Advance our thread forward, and I'm going to make sure I go forward a little bit more here. Last time we didn't quite... We talked about being at that one-third, two-third point, but boy, I tell you what, when I look at it, it really looks and feels like it, uh, it left off right about halfway. I don't want to do that again. All right, two. Two sets of legs. Uh, uh. Uh, all right, we'll go underneath, lift and lower a little bit, put them on the near side of the hook, one more wrap, just enough to get that first bite, because that's all that it's doing, it's just getting that first bite, you know, it's like when you're tying a boat off at a dock and you got the cleat you know you go one one wrap around it you know you can you can hold a lot back with a couple of bites on a line and when I say a line I mean a rope there's no ropes on boats sun just lines all right let's have our little helping hand here Oh, that's so nice. So nice. Hey, Steve, thanks for tuning in. Have yourself a wonderful evening. So what's nice is when you come back, because I got the clock running on the screen, you know right when to fast forward to, which is why I like having that clock on there. It helps me see what time it is when I'm checking things out. Moving forward. So another way, I guess, some people do is they take both and they pinch it down and do something like that. But whatever gets your rubber on the hook, I guess. All right, everything looks kind of crazy for now. Wait till we get this chenille ran through. Boy, oh boy. That's going to be nice, nice, nice. And the key is, the trick is, the name of the game is nice tight wraps. Don't be shy. All right, we'll work our way to right behind those legs. We're going to go right between them once, twice, all right, and before you go too far and get fully committed, you can kind of take those legs and adjust them around if need be. Not gonna be just gotta finish that off holding it up here we go Finish this off with a nice clean whip finish. Nice. A 
good whip finish, you'll feel it. It goes from not locked in, not locked in, and then boom. It all kind of hits the ground running. Oh, I like this one. Shorten these legs up just a wee little bit. And I'm just kind of pulling these all together. I should probably tilt the camera up just a little bit. I pull them all together and I stretch them out just a little bit. But before I cut, I kind of let them all relax a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's a that's a rubber leg if I ever saw one. So that's a white stone fly. Have you ever seen the white stone fly? I'm sure there's got to be a white stone fly out there. Then again, you get that in front of a right bluegill, they're going to smash that either way. Oh, man. Boy, we got a small group tonight. I'll tell you that for free. Everybody must be out ooting the boot. Must be some nice weather or something going on somewhere I don't know all right so I'm going to try another one with the white chenille but I got some different colored legs I want to use on this next one because I in fact have some red I'm going to do white chenille with a uh, red red legs. Kind of opposite of what we've been tying with the white legs. We're going to go with a red legs and a white body. And maybe we'll go back and do a, uh, oh boy, stomach. White legs with a uh, red body. What do you think of them apples? So when they molt, they are white. See, here we go. Uh, white stone fly. So once again, we are using uh, some Dairikis, number 700s. I'm tying these in a size 10. 1X strong, 4X long. Like I said earlier, I measured out my uh, barbless hooks that I normally use. Um, but those are only 2X. And I really wanted to get that extra little bit of length in there. So let's find our wire, which is, here we go, lead free. Keep the lead out. I like to go backwards, reverse wrap. And we got that little tag end. Can use this one to help squish this one down. Bada boom, bada bing. Maybe a couple more. That'll work. You can either helicopter that off or 
Use your nippers. I'm a nipper man myself. But you have to be careful with that because uh, when you do use the, the the flush cutters you do end up uh, creating a sharp edge which if you're not careful and you just start running your thread anywhere and anywhere all willy-nilly things will go sour for you really quick. Tenot, I'm using this white again All right, extra long tag end. We'll start working our thread through there. Just like that. Put it in the parking brake at the back end. And that's my way of tying on weighted wires. A little dam up front, and you know where that's going? Nowhere, that's where. All right, let's get all the way back here. All right, we're going to do our red. A little red rubber leg. Again, I got this pre pre measured out about two inches, because I know I'm going to. Do some trimming here in a minute. There we go. Easy. You know what we did? So we tied on a rubber leg before we did our chenille this time. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. We'll get our chenille in there before we forget about it. All right, we'll advance our thread forward. About that one third, two third point. And we'll take our not one, but two, two legs. Up and over. Just once. Do one more wrap of thread. And then we can slide that one over. This is where you get the minute to adjust. A couple more wraps. Lock that down nice and tight. Fold those back. And we'll work on our little antennae, if you will. this last little batch in here and the f just like the back well not just like the back but the front ones we tie them in really on the top more or less I think that'll work our chenille forward touching wraps. I'll start at the back. Nice close touching wraps and I'm letting this chenille slide slide in my finger but not pulling on it too tight. Because I have found if you handle your chenille too tightly you can actually rub the uh, chenille right off it. I like to do two wraps in there. There we go. I 
like it. small little head up front followed by a, a whip finish yeah buddy this one's pretty solid I like this one I like the white body with the red legs White body, red legs. I like that one. All right, we're going to step this up a notch. Let's do... Maybe not a bona fide woven, but we're going we're gonna to add one more layer of chenille on this maybe. Or maybe we'll save that for later. We'll hold another fly. Hold another tie woven. A woven stone fly. Yeah, we'll save that for another day. patch here off to the side I'm stacking these up on. Keep them organized before I get them to my box. There we go. So let's do another one. This seems kind of got a weird bend to it. There we go. Bottom of the second. One nothing. Mets. Ooh. I got a little little widget that pops up on my phone every time the Chicago Cubs play <laughs> and it's not looking too good for them. Well, that's a slow start. All right, here we are. Dairiki's 700s. Like I said before, you know, it's like trying to compare notes between all the different hooks and what's the difference between a 700 versus a uh, must add whatever yada da 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 da. da. Um, that's the pertinent information. Is the length of the shank and the gauge of the wire. Usually you'll find your, you know, dry flies are on light wires or standard wires, and you know your nymphs and streamers are on maybe a standard wire or a heavy two X 
it strong? I mean, is it really twice as strong? I doubt it. Is it twice as big? Maybe. I don't know. Somebody smarter than me will have to inform me. Hey, James, thanks for tuning in. Glad you could make it. Happy Wednesday. It is Wednesday, right? The 21st. All right. Get the lead in. Not the lead free. Lead free. And the difference between lead and lead free wire. I don't know what the how it measures out, but lead free wire is not as heavy, not as dense as lead. We'll put this on with some reverse wraps. Compress that little spring down. Roll that over nice and flat. Give that a little squish. Here we go. I like it. the brown kind of digging the the white legs I really like the white legs let's, let's see if I can't find a different colored chenille little oh let's do a red body with white legs and we can do a black so I suppose you would really want to uh, tie a few of these up in each color combination that you like um, and I will definitely say that I suppose with these imagination will definitely be your only limitation that is a fact all right we're gonna go with the red body white legs we'll stick with the white well let's go with the black thread so you don't really see the thread. And it might be nice having that little black black spot up front. <clears throat> All right. I like to line up the back end right about where the tip of the tip of the hook is. Start off with our thread with a little bit of extra long tag end. Not super extra long. Maybe a standard long. We'll wrap our thread through our wire. And then until we get to the back end. A few extra wraps. Now we can trim off the tag. See ya. about these super long shanked hooks is boy this I just don't want to bend the hook what can I say so be careful when you get all the way up front all right we're gonna do our chenille this time let's do our red we're gonna do red with white legs will come in different different packaging different shapes some sparkles maybe some barred maybe I don't know maybe a barred rubber leg 
would be halfway decent. But the original was the elastic from Grandma's Girdle. I don't know if it was your grandma's, but... Who says it was hers? Maybe it was his. Maybe it was maybe it was Pat's. I don't know. But I think this is one of those essential flies. It's up there with like the woolly bugger and the clouser. Good old rubber leg. Alright, we'll take that up to the near side. And then fold it over to the far side. Totally not even, but that's all right. We'll even that out here in a minute. All right. Center legs, same thing. Right about that one third, two third point. Let's go ahead and bring that up and around. One extra wrap. And let's get these legs onto this side, and these are legs onto this side. nice tight binding wraps and we'll get ready to tie in our legs up front but we'll use our little helper here use our little helper handy little helper you know I'm surprised they don't sell these at fly shops for like 12 bucks a pack the little hair hair holders I don't know why I don't know why. Ta-da! All right, let's palmer the chenille forward, touching wraps. Let's go in between once. Twice. Just give it a little extra. A little extra beef right back there. Oh, want both those back. Come here, you. Who remembers being called you? the military. Come here, you. Because they didn't, whoever the sergeant was, or didn't know who you were from a distance. Typically, if you were like a private in basic training, come here, you. Well, nope. Not me. Squeak, squeak, sorry about that. There we go. 
nice little red and, red and white. This one's not. <laughs> Legs are looking a little wonky on that one, but I think that'll work out just fine. I think that'll work out just fine, fine, fine. just wants to kick off to the side that's all right we'll let it do it I won't be too upset with it so I'm gonna end up putting these in my panfish panfish box panfish bin on deck we'll do a black and white I like this got our diarikis number 700 size tens one x strong four x long that's the important bit what we're after here is that four x long but can i take two two x longs nope has to be a four x I need to take a quick sip of coffee here. I need to take a quick sip of coffee. Hold on. All right. Twenty-five thousandths. I have not been counting how many wraps. I, at this point, it just feels right for me. But we'll give it a quick count. We'll use Mr. Bodkin to help us. Fifteen, sixteen wraps or so. You can stop at thirteen if you want to be lucky. And we'll take our ten out thread. Let me get rid of that squeak real quick. And what it is is it's actually the plastic on the spool that it's a hard plastics and it just starts to wear off, wear down as it makes in contact with the brass. Alright, let's get this going. Make contact and just work it through. We build our dam in the back. We'll come up front. Build a 
the Miller Dam. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. How about that? Cash me outside. All right, we'll take our chenille. This is uh, a little bit, I think it's a medium, medium chenille. All right, let's find our legs. We're going to stick with these white legs. And I think that's kind of the the grand scheme of the the rubber legs is the white white or the girdle bugs is the white legs for the stone fly, rubber leg stone fly, whatever you want to whatever you really want to call it. The fish don't care. I'll tell you that for free. Fish don't care what you call the fly. They just want to know are you going to park it in front of them. One, two, three, four. Four little bits. Roughly about two inches. I'm going to clean that up underneath there. So, I'm looking at, at that little fuzz right there, right? And the chenille. I'm going to turn my thread away from it. So if I just went in right there and just started chomping, I probably would have trimmed off my thread. That would have been no good for nobody. Alright, these ones go in the back. Right there on the near side of the hook. Roll it over until it's on the far side of the hook. Maybe a little bit more. But be mindful. Watch the tip of that hook. Take that right about that one turd, two turds. Two legs. One more wrap. Near side, far side. Is our handy little helper there. Gotta love the handy little helper. Two to nothing. Ouch. Two to nothing. Alright, here we go. Work on the front legs. Antennae, I guess you would call it. Alright, let's go ahead and palmer our chenille forward. And we can just be mindful around the legs. Otherwise, we want it nice and tight, touching wraps. Slack is evil, right? Two 
gaps in between there. Just because I, th I like that. That's my little twist on it. And depending on how tight you uh, put that first wrap after, will kind of determine the position of those legs. do it. Bada boom, bada bing. I like this one. Even up the legs. I said, I give it a little bit of a tug just to kind of get them all together, but after that, I guess it's anybody's game. I like it with the black body. There's something about having the dark dark body with those white legs. I like it. That's my favorite. Questions, comments, concerns, what do you guys like it, love it? Think it's all right? Have you ever fished one? Tied one? What's your experience with it? Alright, I like that one. Well, it looks like we got time for one or two more. Let's get our hook ready. Let's pick out a chenille. Let's put the other ones away. Because I have... That's my... Weakness in life is I... am terrible at putting things away. Especially on my bench. <laughs> like I've got one, two, three, four, five... Five different little bits of chenille. I like the darker bodies. Ooh, we'll do a tan. We'll do a tan. That's a cool color. Kind of a tannish goldish, kind of a golden stonefly feel to it. Alright. 
size 10, 4x long. used to have just a little bit of a fingernail. All right. We'll start our thread up front. I'm going to leave that tag end in there. Work your thread through the wire. So it disappears in between. The only thing that remains is that tag end. I don't know. That's the way I've eventually come to tie my wires. Is that reverse wrap front to back. And I can build my little dams. And you know where that's going? Nowhere, that's where. All right, let's take this chenille. And just like before, strip off some of the fuzz, exposing that inner core. Fish one of these out. Got all sorts of different colors to choose from. I mean, your sky is the limit as far as resources what you can tie with nowadays compared to the original. I'm sure this was... you could get it in any color as long as it was white. Just set them on and take two wraps if you're in a hurry. Which we're not. Here we go. Perfect. Hey, Ben. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, time. 
got some rubber legs, some girdle bugs. Hippie Back is getting a little, getting a little stiff tonight from all my yard work I did today out in the snow. I couldn't believe the snow was falling. It was, to me, I wasn't expecting anything today as far as weather except for just clouds. I don't know what else you expect when you live in St. Cloud, other than clouds. I wonder if it's always sunny in a town that's like sunshine. I guess it'd be like sunny, sunny side California or sunshine California. I don't know. Let's go between those legs. Once. Twice, just to give it a little extra bulk right there at that point. Ooh, I like this golden stone fly. gold or tan, whatever color you want to assign to it. I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave that. Boy, that's a humdinger, huh? <laughs> I like the rubber legs. I really like that tan. So far, what's your favorite color combination? I'm going to get rid of this. I'm not going to get rid of it, but I'm going to take that one out of the equation. I need to get one more. One more with a different color chenille. I am thinking... Or maybe of a just a different colored green. 
than that variegated. That variegated was a little bit darker. Let's just go with this different green. I like that. Like I said, I like the kind of the darker bodies on these. Size 10, Dairiki number 700. And I think uh, I'll say, you know, when you're done tying flies, you should always wash your hands, especially if you're going to eat right away. And especially if you're messing around with a lead wire. Um, you don't want to end up with lead poisoning. That stuff is no good for nobody either. So just be sure to, if you're handling a, a lead wire, I'm sure whatever is in this lead free wire is probably, it's not super good for you, but better than the lead wire. So if you're messing around with the lead wire after you're done, just be sure to wash your hands really good before you go touching your face and doing other weird things. I don't know. We'll take our 10 knot thread. Chenille. This is kind of more of a bright green opposed to that darker olive, that variegated. Alright, we'll expose the inner core, the inner workings of that chenille. Tie that in. Right at the bend. go let's get these legs tied in huh
come up with our second set. We'll put one on this side and drag the other two the other side. Boing, boing, boing. If you don't have a little hair clip like that, you could use a hackle pliers, clothespin, or just deal with it, I suppose. But the little hair clip really, 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 really works out nice. I mean, if you're tying, tying a girdle bug, what's the difference if you... Uh, using a hair clip or not. Nothing. Mm. Headset's starting to squish in my ears a little bit. That's how I know I've been wearing these for over two hours, almost two hours now. Longer than in most of the movies that I watch. And it's where you put your chenille, and how you put it, and how much tension you put wherever determine where those rubber legs want to bounce to. But nice and tight to the shank. That's what the main goal is. Prime directive. What is your prime directive? Mm, yep, one more. We'll go in between the legs once. Twice, right on top of each other. That'll work. It just gives it just a little bit of extra meat up there. I think it helps shape the body. I don't know. It could just be extra that we're justifying in our own head for no reason, but whatever helps me sleep at night, right? Slip in there, lock right in. Ooh, that's nice. These are all sorts of cattywampus. Uh, you say cattywampus or kittywampus? Catty corner or kitty corner? Kitty corner. I've always said kitty corner. Catty corner. That would be a Minnesota thing like duck, duck, gray duck. Weird. I don't know. There we go. There is a green rubber legs girdle bug. And that is going to be it for our girdle bug evening.
put it in here with the rest of them just for a quick second so we can take a look see what all of them all lined up we'll see the all right and then uh, no particular order we've got red let me know which one you like the best we got red green white brown black or brown uh, bu -bu 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 -bu, kind of a variegated dark olive black and gold this is my little fly patch I got a little piece of Velcro next to my bench. I can stick on there, stick this on, and then I use this on the side side of the river too. Riverside, streamside, waterside, I guess you could call it. Anywho, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat which which one's your favorite. Which one's your favorite? Which one do you think is going to do most effective? I think it's between. In my opinion, either the black, black or the gold. I think those two are the biggest winners. But I think all of these are going to do well. Um, so I should probably, maybe tomorrow, I'll double double back and tie a couple more of each color. But you know, imagination's your limitation. Have fun with it. Um, yeah, so we'll put, we'll put the gold one back up there because that's my favorite. Yeah, maybe just a, yeah, we'll leave it, we'll leave it if they, if they get too many short strikes or whatever, if I'm getting too many hits on the rubber legs and not on the hook, then you might want to trim it down a little bit or we could do something different. Anyhow, I like the black and white. I should be good too. It makes sense. I mean, well, we won't dilly-dally too much longer because Nobody here, just the three of us. <laughs> Thanks for sticking it out all the way to the end. I appreciate it. Be sure to hit that like button. That's the thumbs up there, don't you know? Um, subscribe if you don't too or not. Yeah, we'll do this again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Different fly, different tie. Uh, thank you for watching. Please stay healthy. Please stay safe. Happy tying. Tight lines. Peace.